Let's talk about the analysis of boring lines using the finite element method. The first, let's talk about what are boring lines. Now we are interested in, interested in development of floating offshore wind energy substructures. So to keep the position of floating offshore wind energy substructures, we need to apply the boring lines here. The one end of boring line should be attached to structure and the other end should be anchored on the sea bottom. And then the first type is a catenary type here. The catenary, in the case of catenary type, is, it is extended to the horizontal direction. And then because of low angle, the boring line near the anchor point must interact with the seabed. Now, to reduce the interaction, we can raise up, uh, raise up the partially to reduce the, the length of interaction. And another form is the tension neck uh, platform here. In this case, we introduce high tensile force to the boring lines so that uh, we can provide high stability to the offshore wind energy substructures. All right, so now uh, let's talk about the Gobern equation. To build the Gobern equation, we need to consider the forces acting on the deformed segment. If you consider the deformed segment here, and then the deformed segment is subjected to the distributed force F here. And then at two ends, we must have internal forces T, vector T, and then the internal force must be changed to T plus DTT by the length change DS star. DS star stands for the length, uh, the length of the segment after deformation. And the here E1, E2, E3 stands for the Cartesian coordinate. Uh, the vertical direction is positive over E3, and then the gravity direction is minus E3 here. So before uh, deformation, Ds star must be given by Ds here. Now let's compare, we need to compare these two configurations each other to build the governing equations. The first, let's talk about the deformed segment. If you consider the force equilibrium of deformed segment, the inertial, inertial force must be equal to the internal change of internal force plus uh, applied external force. That is the force equilibrium of, uh, on the deformed segment. And if you compare these two segments together, before deformation, the after deformation, there must be consistent condition because the initial segment is deformed to Ds star. That's why between these two lengths, there must be this, this relation, one plus uh, strain and then Ts. So make sure that although our problem is a large deformation problem, but we want to consider small, small strain only. That's why we can build this linear relation. And then between these two segments, there must be mass conservation too. Uh, here rho stands for uh, the mass density per unit length of the cable. That's why rho ds means the mass of this cable segment. And even, even if it is deformed to ds star, the mass should be the same. That's why we can build this mass conservation problem. All right, and then this is, uh, if you uh, consider the relation between Ts, what I mean before deformation, and the Ts star after deformation, the, the force equilibrium can be changed like this, and then we can cancel Ts from both sides, so we have this equation. The internal force can be given by this equation. So here, it, capital E is elastic modulus and strain. So may, I told you that we want to consider small strain problem, that's why we can measure the internal stress by means of uh, Hooke's law, uh, elastic modulus times strain, and then it is multiplied the cross section area. And then the so NT means the tangential normal, the normal in the tangential direction, direction of the cable. This tangential direction uh, can be calculated by the partial derivative of the position vector with respect to the deformed uh, the length of the segment. Uh, using the relation between Ds and Ts star, we can change Ts star to 1 plus epsilon uh, Ds. So if you plug internal force into equation 5 here, then we can obtain the final, the governing of equation in the initial configuration. Now we have to discretize this uh, governing equation using the standard Galakin method. Uh, in the case of standard Galakin method for regarding the structural engineering problem, this is equivalent to the principle of virtual work. According to the principle of virtual work, uh, for dynamic system, 
the kinetic virtual work should be equal to the difference of external virtual work and the internal virtual work. The kinetic virtual work is the work done by uh, the inertial force, rho times this acceleration. This is the inertial force and the overall the virtual, uh, virtual position. This is uh, kinetic virtual work. And the external virtual work is uh, work done by the force uh, force over the virtual uh, position. And then internal virtual work, the force done by the internal tensile force over the, over the, the stream measure, the derivative of virtual position over the initial uh, length of the structure. And the here, the discrete, to build discrete equation, we need to discretize or interpolate the position using the, the standard shape function. Here, n is the standard shape function. Uh, you can consider the two node, uh, two node element, or if you want, you can consider second node element. It depends on the element technology. And then if you arrange all of this, then we can obtain this is a discrete uh, 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 force equilibrium equation. So make, here make sure that the, here M means mass matrix and the K is stiffness matrix and then F means uh, the discrete external forces. Here the C, C stands for uh, damping. So we can consider uh, the linear combination of mass and stiffness to build uh, the, the damping matrix. But for this problem because of the interaction between the cable and then the fluid, and then we have damping automatically. Uh, or we can consider damping later if you want. And then this is the structure of mass and then stiffness and the external forces. Now according to following the standard finite element method, we can use the shape function defined in the parent coordinate. Then the benefit of using the standard uh, the shape functions in the parent coordinate uh, the integration is almost uh, automatic. The integration domain is always fixed from minus one to plus one. We can use Gauss quadrature. And then this is the integration of stiffness matrix. So please make sure that JC means uh, Jacobian uh, of the current length of, uh, uh, of the element, which is equal to, in the case of a two node uh, element, this is a half of the length of that element. Here, the A is the assemblage operator used in the finite element, element method. So if you look at the external forces, here the second term is the force applied to the element, smoothly, so what I mean, the distributed force over the element. And then the first term represents uh, any concentrated forces to apply the end of a cable or the middle of a cable. Now let's talk about the details of external forces. So we have several different kinds of external forces. First, we need to consider the gravity load by uh, caused by the weight of the cable. And the second one is the buoyancy force uh, caused by the water. The water occupies the volume of the cable. And the third one is the drag forces. So let's talk about the one by one. First one is the gravity. The gravity is Fg is a force, the uh, force distributed over the unit length of deformed cable. This is given by uh, rho star. This is, as I told you, mass density, uh, mass density for the deformed over the unit length of deformed cable. The g is the gravity acceleration coefficient, and the e3 is the normal, uh, the the vertical direction. That because we are talking about gravity, its direction is, is downward now. So using the relation between the rho star mass density of the cable after deformation and then uh, uh, mass density before deformation, so we, we can transform the gravity into this form. And then this is the buoyancy. Buoyancy, uh, to calculate the buoyancy, we need to calculate the volume of the cable after deformation. This is the A star means the current area of the cable after deformation, the D S star, as I told you uh, already. And then the, the, because of the compatibility or the consistency, the, we can obtain A star. And then between the uh, rho star and the rho C. Here rho C is the mass, the, uh, mass density of the material of the cable. And then uh, if you replace the rho star uh, by the relation between T, S and T, S star, 
and then ts again uh, one plus uh, the strain and ts so finally we can obtain the relation of deformed area and if you add up the gravity and the buoyancy together uh, we have this simple equation uh, for the sum of gravity and buoyancy uh, the next one is the drag force. If a cable moves uh, in, in fluid, and then there must be drag force in the opposite direction of the movement. So we have to measure the relative velocity between the fluid and then a uh, cable. This is relative velocity Vr. And then the rho W is the mass density of water, and the C is the drag coefficient which measures the magnitude of the drag forces according, uh, of in proportion to the, the square of, of the, the, the speed of the rel relative speed of the cable. And the TS star, as I told you, this is the deformed length, and the T star is the deformed diameter of the cable. Then we can measure the drag force. Dividing both sides by TS star, we can obtain the relation of uh, drag force FT. And then again, similar to the calculation of A star, we can do the same thing for the diameter, deform the diameter of the cable, that we can obtain this relation. For detailed calculation, please refer to my research note. And this is the final form of the drag forces. Here, we have a certain coefficient. The sub-coefficient is, this is, I, I want to call this is FD. This is uh, B, BW. And here D star is function of strain, that's why BW is function of strain. And then the VR is the relative velocity, and then NR means the, the unit normal direction of the relative velocity. So make sure the drag coefficient is not a constant. It depends on the directions and it depends on the speed too. So here we want to consider uh, the different drag forces in the normal direction and the tangential direction. That's why we want to separate uh, the drag forces into sum of the drag force in the normal direction and the drag force in the tangential direction. The setting different drag coefficient in the normal direction, tangential direction, we have these two different form of drag forces. So make sure that uh, the relative velocity in the tangential direction can be easily obtained if you project the relative uh, velocity to the, the tangential direction of cable. The tangential direction of cable can be obtained from the geometry consideration of the cable, or I mean current geometry. And then if uh, we subtract the tangential uh, rel relative velocity in tangential direction from the total relative velocity, then we can obtain the relative velocity in the normal direction very easily. Okay, this is the final form of external forces. The integration can be carried out by means of standard uh, Gauss integration here. Here, a half of LE means uh, the length of the current, uh, current, current element divided by 2. This is the Jacobian of the two-node two element. Now this is a verification example. As a simple verification example, we want to consider a cable, the long cable, one end is fixed and the other end is fixed on the bottom of the structure. But because this is catenary cable, then usually we consider straight cable and then we release the cable. Then if you do that and the cable is oscillate, then because of drag force, the eventually the oscillation is dissipated, it's going to reach to the stabilized position. So make sure that here uh, there is interaction uh, between the bottom and cable. We do not allow any you know, uh, interpenetration of cable uh, beyond the sea bottom. Uh, from, this, uh, from this example, our simulation is very close to what, measure, what is measured experimentally. And this example, the same example, but here, so we, we move the end point periodically like this using certain period and a certain magnitude. Because this is a harmonic problem, uh, the overall behavior of cable must be harmonic, uh, must show the harmonic relation. Uh, here we compared what is measured experimentally and then this is our calculation. These two results uh, uh, result are close to each other, uh, very closely.